Hello friends. So uh, topic for the day is basics of project planning. Uh, that is scheduling. So as you guys might be knowing that uh, project planning is one of the most important topics or one of the most important subjects uh, that is uh, to be taken up during the execution of a project. It involves sequencing of activities, then uh, uh, calculating the resources required, what are the timelines of those activities. And if we fail to take up or uh, execute it properly, we might fail uh, means this may lead to cat, uh, failures in the project. Often in my career in past nine years, I've seen the project planners are often conversant with the use of softwares that are uh, used in market. However, they are not uh, very much strong in the basics of project planning. So they make one mistake or the other causing failures in the scheduling process. So today I'll be uh, talking about those basics, which if taken care of, will, I'll not say will help you in making a foolproof uh, project plan or a schedule, but definitely they'll they'll help you to avoid the failures that are uh, that may come up due to uh, problems in your project planning so uh, the content uh, for today's webinar would be i would be introducing project planning to you then we'll be talking about development of the network time calculations uh, respond, uh, associated with this network and some other concepts uh, which fall outside the basic concepts. So let's start off. Project planning uh, is the common terminology that is used for a process in project management setup that deals with sequencing of activities that on completion is known as a schedule. Today we'll be dealing with the basic concepts involved in development of a schedule. Now you might be uh, wondering what project management is. So I'll define project management also for you. It is the application of a process methods, knowledge, experience, skills, tools and techniques, etc., to the activities of a project in order to achieve the objectives within time period, budget, and quality. Now to define project, project is a temporary endeavor charted or commissioned to deliver a unique product, service, or result utilizing manpower, material, machinery, and money, popularly known as 4Ms within the constraints of cost, time, and quality. Uh, according to PMI, PM box six condition uh, project is defined divided into five phases. First is initiating, then is planning, uh, then is executing, which goes hand in hand with monitoring and control and closing. There are various steps involved in all these five stages. And today we'll be discussing just one of those. So to give you a brief of the project management metrics as per PMI, we have got uh, on the rows, we have initiating the stages of the project that is initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and control and closing. And in the columns, we have various knowledge fields that are responsible or that are used in project management. That is integration scope. Integration is basically summing up of all the rest of the 10 knowledge management areas, then there is scope, what work is to be done, time, how it, uh, in what time it is to be done, cost under what, uh, cost means cost under what expense it is to be done. 
quality will give you the quality parameters hr will give you the human resource uh, part of it communications will be to an fro info uh, to an fro exchange of information risk would be something that may cause failure then procurement is uh, both material labor and uh, contracts as well then stakeholders is everyone that is responsible and affected by the project so out of all these 47 uh, steps or the activities or the components of a project management matrix today we will just be discussing about number 10 that is sequence activities this is a cross function of planning phase of the project and it falls under time management so moving forward there are uh, various project analysis tools which are used uh, prima facie everyone deals with pert then uh, cpa that is critical path analysis that this is the most commonly used uh, process to analyze a project then there is critical path planning and scheduling uh, decision critical path matter these are derivatives from critical path analysis then there is general resource allocation and scheduling programming then there is gerd lcs pp pna pna is also a president's network analysis this is also one of the most uh, commonly used uh, techniques this is a technique that is mostly used by the softwares then there is line of balance techniques lpc linear program chart today i'll be uh, using the mix of all these uh, techniques and combining them with my 9 years of experience and letting you know of the basics that are used to analyze a project during the planning phase so uh, there are two types of uh, processes that uh, i'll be discussing first is activity or narrow so this is just a common uh, diagram here the circles represents the event and arrows represent the activity second would be activity on node here arrows represent the uh, the boxes represent the activities whereas the arrows represent the relationship between various activities now how let's start off with the topic uh, there are three basic steps that you need to keep in mind when you go for development of a network first is determining the precedence relationship what does precedence relationship means precedence relationship would mean what activity would follow which activity and which activity will be depending uh, on what all activities this needs to be analyzed very carefully there is no logic uh, there is only knowledge of language required in this and you just need to read between the lines and through the lines what is written and you'll automatically know what is what activity which activity will follow uh, what activity and how the scheme of activities will go upon second is determining the extent of inter interdependency uh this is one of the few advanced steps which should uh, follow interdependency basically means how activity a and b or b and c are related for example uh, when we will be going to the advanced phase if we go to the advanced stage uh, today we'll be talking about only a uh, finish to start concept will be talking about that means activity a finishes and b starts interdependency means uh, there is also a case that a starts and b starts simultaneously 
or b starts two days after the start of a uh, don't be means don't get confused by it i'll go along and explain uh, as we go on to the next part of the presentation then the last step is scheduling the flow of activities once you understand point number 1 and point number 2 point number 3 will come automatically to you so to explain these three points let us take up one example oh um, firstly we need to uh, remember what are the elements of a network so activity is the basic building block of a project it is represented um, we'll be talking about activity on arrow first so it will be represented by an arrow event is marks the start or end of an activity will be represented by a circle network the combination of various events and activities will form a network dummy activity uh, will be represented by a dashed arrow and uh, one thing you need to remember is crossing of arrows that is pipeline method if uh, there are two activities uh, that are crossing then you need to make a loop and then follow that activities numbering of events foot rule method of functional rule uh, for carlson's rule this i'll explain you in the next part then there is relationship between activities independent if they are if they are independent sequence burst they merge or they combine this also i'll explain it to you as we go by let's take up an example to understand the concepts better i hope everyone is comfortable as of now and uh, will discuss this example and whole of the concept will be dependent upon this example understanding of this example only so let's start off uh a activity a here a b c d represent activities so a represents the start of the project then a is followed by activity b and c activity d starts on finish of activity b start of activity e is dependent upon completion of c and d d precedes f and e precedes g h succeeds g and i succeed, succeeds f h and i both precede j so first step is basically understanding as uh, i had mentioned two slides back first step is determining the precedence relationship precedence relationship means what activity precedes which activity so i have summarized this for you in the next so let's start discussing it one by one a represents the start of the project that means a will not have any uh, predecessor activity predecessor there are two type of activities for any activity that we will be discussing one is predecessor predecessor means uh it precedes or um, how to simply put it it will happen before this particular activity and successor activity which means it will happen after this activity so a represents start of the project so on the start of the project before the start of the project there is no activity so a will not be having any predecessor however uh, then point number 2 is a is followed by activity b and c so there are two successors to b and c or to a that is activity b and c so when we list it out uh, there will be a simple uh, column activity predecessor activity and successor activity for a in predecessor activity will be not applicable or none and successor will be b and c then we come down to activity b activity b uh, will have predecessor as a as a uh, b is the successor of a thus vice versa <coughs> sorry a will be the predecessor of b 
and if we come down to the next step activity d starts on finish of activity b thus activity d will be the successor of activity b similarly for c a will be its predecessor and now we move on to next part start of activity is dependent upon completion of c and d what does this mean activity e is dependent on start completion of c and d which means e will have activity c and d as its predecessors okay then coming on to next step d precedes f and e precedes g this point is giving us relationship between four activities that is d and f and e and g as of last point we had uh, d whose successor was e e we had a uh, predecessor uh, we e had predecessor as c and d now in this part e will precedes f so in the column of successor against activity d will be having e and f e precedes g for e the predecessor will be g and uh, successor will be g and predecessors will be c and d now moving on h succeeds g and i succeeds f similarly for g predecessor is e and successor is h and for f predecessor is d and successor is i and for both h and i successor is j and there will be no successor of j as we don't have any other relationship or logic to think of i have summarized all this up for you in the next slide see whatever we were talking about a uh, there is no predecessor successor are b and c b predecessor is a successor is d c predecessor is a successor is e d predecessor is b so uh, this we can see if b has successor d then d will have a predecessor b it has successor e and f e uh, it is a successor of uh, both c and d so it will have predecessor as c and d then successor is g and so on finally to the last activity h and i are its predecessor and successor is none now to put up put it up into a network see sim simply an activity is represented by an event that is a circle an arrow and a circle so let's start it off a is the initiation of a project so circle arrow and circle a this represents the start of the project it is followed up by b and c so there are two activities which will start on completion of a then on completion of b b starts and c complete uh, gets completed separately now here is the trick thing e uh, start of e depends on completion of d and c whereas f is only dependent upon d so if we move uh, d and c to finish at same point this will we will have will be having a problem over here so what do we use we use a dummy activity dummy activity has a time line time of zero it is just to show that uh, this event coincides with this event however the event where d is finishing is independent upon of the event where c is finishing so d is transferred to uh, c through a dummy activities which results in start of activity e and uh, simply activity f starts 
on completion of activity D. And as we move forward, G is dependent upon E, I is dependent upon F, H is dependent on H, both I and H precede J. So this will form development of a network. What we were talking about uh, in the slides, determining the extent of interdependency, this can be understood over here from D, C, E, and F. E is dependent, de depend is dependent upon C and D, but F is dependent only on D. So F can start automatically, automatically when D gets finished, but it has to be independent upon independent of C. But to make it possible that E is dependent upon both C and D, we need to put in a dummy activity. This is what de dependency or means. So in development of a network, we need to un uh, remember one golden rule, which is the network diagram represents a project which compulsorily has single start event and a single end event. This is the golden rule. If our network diagram has one start event and one end event, we will not be having in any problem. This is one of the most common problems or mistakes that is done by project planners. They have two or three ends which do not 